It's the biggest bootstrap release since version 5 of the framework. And the most notable thing is the addition of a bunch of CSS variables that make it easier to customize everything. Now, bootstrap is getting ready to welcome dark mode into the fold, and this beta release prepares you for just that. There's some other goodies in there, so let's break down all the CSS changes with demos of the cool new features in the world's most popular HTML, CSS, and JavaScript library. Let's take a look at how you can use variables in this version of Bootstrap. So here's how you would normally use a variable. You would target an element, and then in that element, you would set up a, say, color, and here you can use a variable. Now, Bootstrap provides a number of existing variables, and you can see them all right here on this page. There's a ton of them. So for example, if we wanted to use the blue variable, we could just use BS blue right here and it would use this color. Let's try that. So two dashes, BS, and then we'll use the blue color here. You can see that it worked just fine. But if you want to, you can override any of these existing variables in the root and of course then use them. So we could say, and this is just how we use variables in the root section, we're going to redefine the way a specific variable works. So we will redefine the way BS primary works. And now notice that since I've used that variable in this headline, it's changing the color of the primary variable in the headline. It's not affecting this button. So you do have to manually overwrite each individual element. So if I wanted to say, modify the way that buttons work, I would have to redefine the way that BTN primary works here. And so now the addition is that there are specific variables attached to most of the elements that you can use with any of the components. So now there's a variable called BS, BTN, BG. And in here, you can use BS primary. Now, if you want to, you can redefine other things. Notice that the buttons have this outline around them and they also have a hover state. And so there's a whole bunch of additional variables that you can modify here. So you could say, let's do the uh, BS, BTN, border, color, and we'll redefine that to be a new variable that we'll create called dark purple. So now I have to create that variable here in the root and we'll give it a darker color. If you want to know which variables are available for each component, you can just do a search in the documentation. And generally at the bottom of the page, you'll see a section for the variables. And here's the ones that are available for the buttons. Now these right here are the SAS variables. They're not the just plain CSS variables. Those are a little bit further down here. Now what you see here is also a combination of the regular CSS variables, which you can overwrite pretty easily. But then there's also some SAS variables that allow you to make things darker. You won't be able to use this in regular CSS, but you can at least use the name of the variables that are right here. Let's take a look at some of the other features. In Bootstrap, you can easily change the background color of an element by adding a BG and then one of the colors. So you can say BG danger like this, and it'll change the color of the background. But sometimes the text doesn't look good because it doesn't have enough contrast against that background. What you used to do is add a text color class, and then you would say something like text white here to change the color of the text to something that looked a little better. But now there's a better way of doing this, and that is by using the text BG, so you can say something like danger here, and it does the same thing, but it automatically will apply a good contrasting color. And you can use that all over the place. By default, this will give you these color combinations. If you use a light color, it makes the text black. If you use the dark color, it makes it white and so on and so forth. You can still overwrite them by using the traditional classes as well. So if you did want that text to be yellow, you could still use text and then warning here and it would change the text to yellow as well. But it's just a little bit quicker to use the defaults now. That's a pretty good change. Let's talk about a couple of other minor changes. I'm going to change this right here to warning first just to make it a little better. First is the addition of a new font weight. You now have the option of using the semi bold option here. So this is of course different than the bold or the medium. You also may notice a slight change in the roundness of some elements. And there are a couple of classes that you can use now as well to determine the roundness of something. So you now have rounded four and rounded five as additional options. So let's see those 
we'll do a round edge right here. So roundness four gives you just sort of a wider roundness right here. And as I mentioned, the default roundness is already a little bit different. And you also have roundness five for some pretty massive roundness. Next up is a small change to the off canvas component. So if you haven't used this before, what it allows you to do is to create a menu that comes from one side with this new version. What you can do is control when that button appears so that it's responsive right now by default, this button and the sidebar will appear no matter what size you're in. So this new change, which is pretty minor, allows you to just say something like off canvas LG. And now the sidebar will appear only in in items that are below the large size. So you'll see that at some point, you'll actually get to see part of the sidebar, which is a little bit weird. And that means that you have to control it by also hiding it manually. So you would say something like DLG none here, and that would hide the component. And that means that this button doesn't really make any sense whenever you're in the large size. So once I'm here, if I click on it, notice that it makes the background darker, but it doesn't appear, which means that I should also hide this button, DLG none of now that hides the button and also the sidebar. I don't know that this is that particularly useful, but it's another option that you have when working with Bootstrap 5.2. Here's a couple of minor changes to tables. You have the ability to define when a table stripes vertically. So generally when you add the table stripe class, the table stripes horizontally. So every other item would be striped, but now you can do that vertically with striped columns. To do that, all you have to do is add a table striped columns class here. And now you can see the color changes on every other column. Now, one thing that you may notice is that before there used to be thick lines in between the table head or the T head and the T body that has now been reset so that the lines are always the same. You can put in a thicker divider manually now. So if we go to, let's say the table hover section here, I'm going to go into the T body and add a class here of table group divider. So now I need to scroll down and you can see the thicker divider right here. There are no color classes or any other utilities yet. There are some utilities in SAS, but for now, this is all you can do with this new class. Let's talk about a couple of changes to scroll spy. It's a little bit easier to write because you do not need a position relative container. What scroll spy does is it takes a look at what's showing up on the page. And as you scroll, you'll see that different parts of this navigation will highlight. It does that by letting you specify this data spy scroll here, and then also a target that is going to control the scroll. And normally this goes in the body section, but you can put it in other subsections as well. And there's a couple of examples on the website in the documentation. Uh, so you could see here that you can get it to highlight things as they appear. Now it's using a new technology called intersection observer. This is a JavaScript API and I think it works a little bit differently. So now when I scroll to Dolores, you'll see that it highlights. And when bubbles appears on screen, it'll also highlight. But when Dolores leaves the screen, it'll unhighlight, which is interesting. I'm not sure I like this a lot better, but you can see bubbles there started to highlight as soon as it actually a little bit before it came on screen. So right about there, it noticed, I guess, that it was about to be on screen and then it highlight. There's a couple of other minor changes to this as well. So there's a couple of methods that will let you control how this works and they have changed. There's one called root margin now that allows you to control the offset. Now I tried using this in this beta version of Bootstrap and it wasn't working well for me. It also allows you to control the smooth scrolling when a user clicks on a link. Uh, this is also interesting that all the components now support an experimental data attribute called data BS config that allows you to sort of save a JSON version of the config variables and look how it's strangely coded. Any attribute would normally have a regular quote. Now this one has a single quote and then you have double quotes inside because this is a JSON formatted element. So you can use allegedly this notation. Again, I tried it and, and I couldn't get it to work. 
there is some interesting changes that you have to do. So like, even though it is camel case right here, when you do specify it in the examples, you'll see that it is written as BS dash root dash margin. And that's interesting. I think it's kind of nice that it is a little bit simpler, uh, but the engine underneath has been modified so that it's using the JavaScript API for intersection observer. All right, so let's take a look at one more thing, and that is a class addition to form checkboxes, switches, and also radio buttons. So basically what happens now is that in addition to form check, we have form check reverse. And what that does is align things to the right. Sometimes you wanted things to be aligned to the right, so this is sort of nice. And uh, you can do it over here as well. It also works with radio buttons. So you can see they align also. Now an inline element, it's going to align each individual item to the right, not the entire thing. And then also the same thing happens with switches. So you could just add that to a switch. And you can see that now even the switches are right aligned. So though that's a very tiny change, it seems like it's something we should have had a long time ago. So I'm pretty happy about this one, even though it's a tiny minor change.